Today I'll be talking to you guys about the difference between delta modulation and adaptive delta modulation and the benefit we get from adaptive de delta modulation. So to start, what is delta modulation? Delta modulation is basically steps. So here we have this analog signal approximating to our voice. Our voice is just a set of multiple frequencies that, that we see. And so what we want to do is we want to change this analog signal to a digital uh, so that we can encode it, we can uh, encrypt it, we can send it basically online from one source to another. And so by, with delta modulation, this is one of the methods that we can do. So we take a point, compare it with our original signal, and if it's lower than it, then we increase it by a step size or change it by a step size. And if it's higher than it, then we decrease it. That's as far as delta modulation goes. Notice the step size is the same with each step. So this means that there's a, a sort of like a speed we can go up and a speed we can go down. Now, in order to, what you'll actually notice is that there's actually a lot of noise that appears between what our signal thinks it is and what it actually is. And so this can be adjusted using adaptive delta modulation. So adaptive delta modulation is, if you notice here, as the steps go up, as, as it recognizes that it needs more steps, it actually increases the step size that appears here. And so as it goes up and down more, it decreases the step size. This is the benefit that comes from adaptive delta modulation. Now, uh, what I'll be talking about today are two types of uh, adaptive delta modulation that I like to call additive delta modulation or multiplicative, multiplicative delta modulation. Additive is where you increase the step size additively so if you have say a step size of 1 and you have a step size delta of 2 then as you increase in more you add 2 to it so you're going to go 1, 3, 5, 7 and that's the gist of additive. But multiplicatively, you increase it or you multiply it by two such that you go or you multiply it by a certain amount. We'll say two in this case. So it goes one, two, four, eight. And so it increases multiplicatively rather than additively. And so here's my code for this. We have our wave file input, which contains my voice, my uh, beautiful voice here. Hey, that's pretty good. And what we do is we actually shift this uh, signal from a 1 to minus 1 range, which is what we input it, and we change it to a 0 to 255 to approximate it to an 8-bit place. So each each point it can actually be encoded with 8 bits. This allows us to stream it online from one place to another. Quite useful. And so we have here a for loop for 1 to the n max, which is uh, the number of samples that we do essentially corresponding to the, uh, the sampling frequency that we have. We have our initializations and then we have the we first find the direction that it's going. We have our original signal minus what our signal is, uh, what we approximated as previously. We take the sign of that, so it's going to be positive or negative depending on whether we need to go up or down then we just apply our own methods to it, whether we want to do the multiplicative, we want to do the additive, or whether we just want to do just a standard step size, and that's what we see here. So this is how I approximate it for each level. And so if we go back to here, this is what what I get when I do this approximation. As you, as you can see, we have a lot of high frequency, a lot of just low frequency, and here is an approximation of what appears. This is multiplicative uh, adaptive delta modulation. And so if we get closer, you can see that each point is actually close to a certain level or a bit, so that each point can be represented in a stream of 8 bits, which makes it easy to transfer. And so here's our original signal that we have between 1 and minus 1. Here's the results that we get from delta modulation. Here's the results that we get from additive delta modulation. 
adaptive delta modulation and multiplicative adaptive delta modulation. You'll notice that with uh, multiplicative, adaptive, and additive, you'll see that the noise that appears, or we'll, we'll definitely see it later, but the noise that appears here is actually far less than what appears in delta modulation because delta modulation is actually constant in this case. You also find that the shift of going up for each one will be much less in adaptive delta mo uh, modulation than delta modulation. So if we take a look at the error, this is delta modulation error. It's constant, gradual constant, not zero here. And we get more noise when we're shifting up to a higher value, basically. Then we have constant, then more noise, constant, more noise. It's just, it's just overall, we have more noise, as we see in the signal, compared to uh, additive and multiplicative. With additive, we get very small compared, and when we're shifting up, it tries to take care of that shifting up, uh, shifting up, so it ends up with less noise around here as well. We still have a spike here. I mean, it's not perfect method, but it tries its best essentially. And multiplicative, while not as efficient as additive, does a pretty good job with what's to be expected. And so finally here I made these graphs based on the step size for each one, well the step addition for here, the step multiplication. So uh, it basically is telling us the signal to noise ratio that appears with each one. So if I change the step size for delta modulation from 1 to 2 to 3, this is the signal to noise ratio that we'll get signal to quantize noise ratio. So this is the noise that appears between our signal and the original signal versus uh, it's a signal power over the noise power, signal power being the signal that we want, and then the noise is that noise that we see when it's between uh, the signal that we want and the way it actually is. So we want less noise such that we want a higher uh, signal to quantize noise ratio to appear. And so what I have here is graphed what's that the step size here for delta modulation. So it's going to be step size of like 1 bit, 2 bits, 3 bits, 4 bits, 5 bits. What I have here for um, step addition is I have the change in steps to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the change in 1. So if it's, if it's going up more than twice, it's going to go up by 1 bit. Here it's going to go up by two bits. Here it's going to not go up by three bits, and so it, it basically uh, it's this is the change in the delta. And here we have the step multiplication, which is change, uh, multiply by one, multiply by two, multiply by three. And so what we'll find is that the step addition, step multiplications at their peaks tend to have a higher signal to quantize noise ratio than the uh, delta modulation, which is what we want and what we expect. So we want a better signal to noise ratio, but there is at a certain point when step addition and step multiplication uh, actually have a less signal to noise ratio than the best part that appears with delta modulation. So it's best to be aware that some uh, step multiplication, step addition, is worse than the original delta modulation. As long as you know this, you'll understand that. Just understand that while this method, uh, the adaptive delta modulation, is better, it can be worse. So here you will see we can get like a signal to noise ratio of around 17, uh, 15 around here, and then the best we get out of delta modulation is like 12. So yeah, it's the way adaptive delta modulation can work first.